It's July 4th, 1919. Kid Blackie Jack Dempsey gets a shot at the world heavyweight title in Reno, Nevada, taking on six foot six champion Jess Willard, the Potawatomi Giant. Dempsey graduates to the Manassa Mauler as he beats, batters, and destroys Willard in three rounds. It was the type of performance that catapults a boxer into worldwide megastardom, and it did. When you think about sports at the turn of the 19th century, many great sports were in their infancy. Baseball was still well underway, becoming America's pastime. The NFL as we know it today was practically non-existent. The best athlete was a master of many sports, Jim Thorpe. Boxing, though, had been around for a long time, especially considering the bare knuckle era before it. Despite many individuals and institutions trying their hardest to ban the sport, boxing thrived regardless as the supply was in high order, driven by the demand. Also, unlike many other sports, boxing was an individual competition and could, in theory, take place anywhere. And it pretty much did. The heavyweight division drove all of the significant money in boxing at the time. The world was enamored with seeing two big guys slug it out. This attracted all types of attention from law enforcement to the mob. Everyone wanted a piece of the pie. In 1919, the World Heavyweight Championship was held by the Potawatomi giant Jess Willard. Willard had picked up the title when he knocked out Jack Johnson in the 26th round of their World Heavyweight Championship fight in Havana, Cuba on April 5, 1915. Willard had been handpicked for that specific duty. Jess Willard's reign was one of the worst in the sport's history as he only defended his title once, fighting to a draw with Frank Moran in 1916. He didn't fight again until 1919, his devastating title loss to Jack Dempsey. Dempsey's title win changed everything. The title had been log jammed for years between the reigns of Willard and Johnson, with Johnson having a more defensive style at the time and Willard not having a style at all other than being big and strong. Dempsey, on the other hand, was practically an all-offense fighter with his crouching come forward style. Dempsey fought every fight with bad intentions. As his rival Gene Tunney once stated, it's as if he wanted to kill me. Knockout sell and Dempsey was great at producing them, with 43 of his 53 wins coming via knockout. Dempsey would follow up his title victory with a September 6, 1920 knockout of Billy Misk, becoming the first and only man to knock out Misk in his 104 fight career. Dempsey's next contest was a fifth round knockout of Bill Brennan on December 14, 1920. Dempsey not only looked the part, but backed up his bravado with knockouts. For better or worse, it would be Dempsey's next fight that would change and eclipse everything of the past as every possible star aligned. While you're here, be sure to subscribe because this is only the beginning. We will have more in-depth historical boxing content coming very soon. Saturday, July 2nd, 1921. The venue is Boyle's 30 Acres in Jersey City, New Jersey. Legendary promoter Tex Rickard has again constructed a venue from scratch dedicated explicitly to hosting Jack Dempsey's World Heavyweight title defense against then reigning World Light Heavyweight Champion the Orchid Man George Carpentier of France. Though Jack Dempsey had become a beloved figure some two years earlier, a lot of animosities were in the air as Dempsey had recently gone through divorce procedures with his first wife, Maxine Cates. Cates lamented Dempsey, stating that the military deferment, which excused him from serving in World War I, had not been deserved. Furthermore, a publicity photo of Dempsey posing at a shipyard with blue-collar workers seemingly having put in a day's work backfired as newspapers noted Dempsey was wearing patent leather shoes. This sharply contrasts with George Carpentier, a decorated military man who had served in World War I as a pilot. 80,000 plus fans packed into Boyle's 30 acres to witness what would become an iconic matchup in the sport's history. 
In agreement with Tex record, Dempsey would refrain from dominating Carpentier, who was giving up 20 pounds in the early part of the fight as he wanted the fans to have a show. Carpentier was noted for being one of the finest pure boxers in the sport at the time. Carpentier landed a hard right in the second round that left Dempsey on wobbly legs. This changed the overall tone of the fight. From that point, Dempsey would pursue Carpentier with relentless force. At the beginning of the fourth round, Dempsey would land a combination capped by a hard right hand that sent Carpentier to the canvas. Carpentier would recover and get on his feet at the count of nine. The damage had been done as shortly thereafter, Dempsey would land another combination that sent Carpentier down and out for good as he struggled mightily to regain his motor functions to no avail. In the lead up to the fight, Tex Rickard had gone through unprecedented lengths to promote the fight, specifically through radio. The radio broadcast covered over 250 miles and more than 350,000 people had listened to the fight, the biggest radio audience in history. This in turn brought in high visibility press coverage for the contest in addition to the paying fans. The tickets to the fight ranged from $5 to $50. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, on the low end, $5 in July of 1921 would be the equivalent of $83.69 in July of 2022. On the high end, $50 in July of 1921 would be the equivalent of $836.94 in July 2022. This resulted in a massive haul for the time. The total gate reached $1,789,238 in ticket sales when all receipts were tallied. In July 2022, this is the equivalent of a massive $27,900,435.67, unprecedented for the time. This was the first boxing match in history to produce over a million dollars in revenue, hence the reference to this fight being the first million dollar gate. Dempsey was paid $300,000, which is the equivalent of $4,678,042.11 with today's inflation, while Carpentier received $200,000, which is the equivalent of $3,118,694.74 today. In addition, it was reported that each fighter would receive 25% of the money generated from the broadcast rights. The stadium built at Boyle 30 Acres cost Tex Rickard $250,000, the equivalent of $3,898,368.42 today. The fight catapulted RCA into a multi-million dollar company after the vision of Mayor Andrew J. White saw him team with David Sarnoff of RCA taking a gamble on broadcasting the fight over the radio. In the aftermath, the annual sale of radio sets rose from 60 million in 1922 to 358 million in 1924. The buck didn't stop there, as this would not be the last time Jack Dempsey made history at the gate. He would need a rival even more significant than George Carpentier, someone born on American soil. That, though, will have to wait for another story.